Number one thing, don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. If you just read the bio for Dr. Steve, host of Weird Medicine on Sirius XM 103 and made popular by two really comedy shows, Opie and Anthony and Ron and Fez, you would have thought that this guy was was a bit of, uh, you know, a, a clown. Your show was better when you had medical questions. Hey! I've got diphtheria crushing my esophagus. I've got Ebola virus dripping from my nose. I've got the leprosy of the heart valves exacerbating my incredible woes. I want to take my brain out and blast it with the wave, an ultrasonic, echographic, and a pulsating shave. I want a magic pill for all my ailments, the health equivalent to Citizen Kane. And if I don't get it now in the tablet, I think I'm doomed and I'll have to go insane. I want a requiem for my disease, so I'm paging Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve! Hey, it's Weird Medicine, the first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of broadcast radio, now a podcast. I'm Dr. Steve with my little pal, Dr. Scott, the uh, traditional Chinese medical doctor who keeps the weird in alternative medicine assholes at bay. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Hey, Say hey, it again. It's my pleasure, Dr. Steve. Thank you, sir. And uh, my wife, Tacey, the uh, professional WebEx attendee. Hello, Tacey. Hello, everyone. And everybody, Stacy Deloach. Yay! Uh, here in the studio. Oh, well, I messed that That up. was pretty pathetic. Yeah, it wasn't class. very good. <laughs> I I'm forgot it was on the same soundboard. I'm an idiot. I'm not this is a show for people who never listen to a medical show on the radio or the internet. If you've got a question, you're embarrassed to take your regular medical provider. If you can't find one, answer anywhere else. Give us a call. 347-766-4323. That's 347 Poohhead. head Visit our website at drsteve.com for podcasts, medical news, and stuff you can buy. Or go to our merchandise store. Ah, don't go there. CafePress.com slash Weird Medicine. You can get a Bristol stool scale mug there. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's Christmas, Steve. Yeah, you know, that's true. Go to, we make 30 cents on those, but that's fine. Uh, get a Bristol school, stool scale mug. It's not about us, it's about you. It is hilarious, and it's a great uh, one of those white elephant gifts. Um, and uh, follow us on Twitter at Weird Medicine and at DR Scott WM. Most importantly, we are not your medical providers. Take anything you have with a, here on this show with a grain of salt. Don't act on anything you hear on this show without talking it over with your doctor, nurse practitioner, physical nurse, practical nurse, physician assistant, pharmacist, chiropractor, acupuncturist, yoga master, physical therapist, clinical laboratory scientist, <laughs> registered dietitian, or whatever. The list gets longer and longer. So anyway. All right. So, um, Dr. Scott, good to have you back, my friend. You're still doing some uh, Simply Herbals, so check him out at simplyherbals.net. And don't forget stuff.drsteve.com for all your Amazon needs, S-T-U-F-F dot drsteve.com. You can just click straight through and go to Amazon, or you can scroll down and look at all the different things that we have on there that we've talked about on this show. And uh, if you want the best earbuds on the market, go to, twe- uh, for the price, tweakedaudio.com, offer code FLUID, F-L-U-I-D. You get 33% off. These are great stocking stuffers and Hanukkah gifts and all that kind of stuff. And then if you want to lose weight, before the holidays get really kicked in, go to Noom, N-O-O-M dot drsteve.com. Noom is not a, uh, it's not a diet. It's a psychology program, and it will change your relationship with food, and you will lose weight. I'm uh, closer to my ideal body weight than I've been in the last about 20 years, and I'm getting close to what I weighed in college. Well, sorry, not true right after college when I went from 122 up to 155. So <laughs> that was some damn thing. And I, I was at 155. My my um, body mass index was 23, and people were going, wow, Steve's gotten fat. So that's how skinny I was in mm. high school. Anyway. Oh, God, before we uh, get started, I got another one of those calls today. Hi, this is this is Emily from Card oh, Member Services. It's Apple it's like, Support, Steve. Apple Support's called me like six times today. I had one the other day. The guy was obviously, and, you know, I have a lot of um, uh, 
uh, partners who are from India, so I know many naughty words in Hindi. And one of these guys called and said, hello, my name is Jeffrey or something like that. And I just went, hey, hey, bura, hey, and then just started in on him. And then I said, at the end, I said, hamare do I apkisati, which means God bless you. And then I hung <laughs> up. But I said some very naughty things that even in Hindi I will not say on this show. Hmm. So anyway. <laughs> That's fun. Good. God bless my uh, my uh, uh, Hindu uh, Hindi speaking uh, partners because they've helped me out in that regard. So anyway, all right. Uh, so Stacy, good to see you, man. Thank you. Good so to be here. You've got a new thing going on, right? You're saving lives and stuff. Give us the Reader's Digest version of it because when you start talking about this thing, it really, it, you know, it gets old pretty fast. And That's I'm not, me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is pretty cool. So there, what you're doing is saving lives on uh, for maritime people. I came up with a little program that's called Shelby for Self-Help Emergency Life Buoy. Okay. And now why do we need something like that? Well, in the Inland River maritime system, there's... About five people a year fall overboard and die just from drowning, just unaccounted. And the, most of the problem is that when they fall over, they get swept away by the river current. And there's nothing to grab, nothing to keep you from getting sucked up under the bow of a barge. So what happens is there's one barge and then there's another barge and another barge. That's the problem. I just think of, you know, when I was whitewater rafting, you, you get dumped from the boat. You just you swim to shore. Right. Even in the worst things, they would tell you you might be a mile downstream, but as long as you go, you know, perpendicular to the current, don't try to fight the current, just go perpendicular to it, you'd be okay. Right. But when you fall off a barge in the middle of the Mississippi River, it ain't like that, right? At night, and mostly what you're going to have below you is the fleet of more barges, and they're pointed upstream, so you have what's called the rake, which is just a long, long sloping section that comes up and there's nothing to grab so if you did get washed down to that it's going to, the current's going to carry you under this barge oh man can and you the, imagine so you survive falling off the barge of course it's how high are those there's uh 12 to 15 feet but the problem is if you fall over did you come up and hit your head up under the barge oh, if the barge is empty now you're on. unconscious and now you get carried down the bar or down the river and you get swept up under there's 10 barges that's 3,000 feet of steel that your body will not survive going yeah. up under oh boy dang, dang. all right so and, how are you going to save these people you can't put a life ring out because the problem with a life ring is that it's round and so it's it caught on stuff yeah trees that come down through their root balls they all get stuck in there yeah so mm-hmm. what i came up with it's a torpedo shape it's kind of like if you ever watched Baywatch and you actually watch the show, not the mm. beauty yep. of the show, right. but they carry these lifeguard safety <laughs> Yeah, that cans. David Hasselhoff was very attractive. Hot. <laughs> and so what I designed was a system based off of that de- off of that shape. Yeah. And it's mounted on a 6,000 tensile strength rope, and it's 50 feet long, So if you f- and it always rides in the current. Sure. Right along mm. the side of the barge, because the problem is if you fall over, there's nothing to grab right. until you get swept away. Huh. And why can't somebody just throw you a life, uh, you know, throw you a thing? Well, two problems is, A, like I said, the shape of it, and B, a life ring is a two-person job. There you so go. you have to have a victim, and then you have to have somebody see the victim or hear the victim, then go find a life ring, and then try to get to them and deploy it, but they're already floated away. Because what I've heard is that the most of the people that die on these, no one ever knew that they fell off. Correct. They just come up missing. Because oh. 90% of the time, you're working by yourself at 3 in the morning out there trying to unload, you know, I don't care if it's gasoline, diesel, if it's a pressure barge, you're doing, you know, butadiene or oh my some polymer, and then... Oh. The dog guy's up there. He's generally nothing against the dog guy, but he's watching TV or Netflix. Yeah, sure. And and they can't hear you scream when you fall over. Oh, my goodness. So what this system oh, is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they just come out to look at you or your relief shows up. It's kind of, holy crap. Yeah, you know, where's, where's, where's Stacy? Yeah, <laughs> nobody knows. And then yeah. you find the body five or six days later. Oh, oh my geez. goodness. If you ever find it at yeah. all. I bet there's some that don't There's some that they're never accounted for. I got into this business 20 years ago. I took a dead kid's job. He'd been on the job for three days. And there's what's called the duck pond is what we call it. That's where four barges match up. But in that one section, there's always a hole right there. And sure. what they think is this kid sure. went there to go what we call kicking the toe, which is go step on the wires, make sure all the wires are tight. And this kid fell in the duck pond. Oh, oh, and he just never came back. And it took oh. three days. And they finally put divers up under and they found him, his life jacket. He was still in his life jacket, but he was stuck on a piece of torn steel up under the boat. Under the, oh, under come the bar. on. So he rode there for three days. So that, that was my first job. I took his place. Oh, that's oh, awful. But God. Just the thought of that. Yeah. 
So what this system is, it's like I said, it's called Shelby, self-help emergency life buoy. And the idea is if you fall over, this thing is 50 feet long. It is always trailing right down the edge of the barge in the current. If you're making your rounds, you know you, where it's it. Well, when you're going to go right into that because yeah. you'll go the same place it's it does, carry it right? to you. Right. And it's all covered in solace, which is safety of life at sea, reflective tape. So even at night, it looks like a snake. Hmm. Yeah. So you've got something to grab. I. I'm not using the word rescue because I can't say that you could pull yourself back up 12 mm-hmm. feet onto this barge when you're cold, right. you're scared, you're soaking wet. But you won't die. Right. That's the biggest thing is I don't want you to float away and die. I don't mm-hmm. care if you had to spend six hours because this buoy has 150 newtons of positive lift for about 33 pounds. So you can throw it between your legs, sit on this thing with your life jacket right about, you know, with your head up out of the water that's mm-hmm. got a nylon strap that you can put around your shoulders in case you're too tired to hold on. You can literally just put this over your shoulders up under your arms and just slide wait till somebody notices yeah. that you're missing and pull there's you back two, in yeah there's two lifeguard whistles matter not so you can get one of these whistles and blow it to get somebody's attention and could it, you hear that on the i don't know what that was hmm. but what the, was that i have no idea but it being 50 feet long the barge is 53 feet wide so worst case scenario you can kick yourself over to the dock once you calm down and make a plan oh yeah wow and so it just wow like i said there's Five to seven people a year come up missing it. Yeah, like I oh, tell- you save one life with this. Yeah, I mean, five to seven. good on you. That seems like a big number. Quite honestly, you know, yeah. quite a bit of. Why are you sounding so far away? I don't know, I, but but mine is on its. Okay, it's well, I, I move up on it a little. <laughs> I think that noise was a text, but I don't understand why my thing is making noise on your thing. I don't know. Anyway, anyway. sorry. So okay, wow, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. So man. we're going. So how do it, let's say we've got a someone who is a uh, who owns a barge company who's listening to this how would they find you bargelifeline.com bargelifeline.com or, check it out or usamarineconsulting.com it, okay. it'll take you to the same place and, yeah mm. cool like i said I, I don't want to i'm not doing it to get rich i'm just tired of seeing people that i know die yeah well you know what how about this i'm assuming that when a you know a but twenty year old kid falls off and drowns, their the family's gonna sue the barge company. Oh yeah. So um, you know, if they're twenty and they would have made a couple million in their lives, then you know, they're you're gonna be paying a, at least a fraction of that. Right. As opposed to paying how much is this thing? Three hundred and fifty dollars. There you go. So one life saved is priceless and then but to the barge owner that just saved them a couple million yeah, bucks. Yeah, wrongful death lawsuit. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Okay. Wow. Cool. Awesome. Well, I appreciate I, I, it. I'll give you one of these. Yay. We didn't really have you on to just plug things because here's the thing about Stacy. If we're plugging stuff, we should plug Dr. Scott's website. You still got simplyherbals.net going? Yeah, for now. Yeah. Yeah, for okay. now. What are you going to do after that? Mm. Not open a beer store. <laughs> you know, I just paid off the loan that I took for my 401k from that. Yes. So thank you very much. Well, you're ahead of me. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. I lost less than you did. But uh, we, no. Scott and I both lost one. It was a total loss. So. Yes, but it was a lot of good beer consumed. It certainly was. It was awesome. <laughs> it was a great place. I mean, are, are we still going to uh, yeah. take legal action against our landlord? Or are Maybe. we just letting it go? Are we no. just going to say namaste and Maybe. let it go? And we'll learn some of those dirty words in, in Hindi. Oh, Hindi. boy, I can teach them to you. <laughs> I know some in, I saw some really naughty words in Tamil. I have a resident right now who speaks Tamil, and I'm like, I know a lot of words in Tamil, and I can't say one of them to you. Mm-hmm. I can say poda, and that just means, hey, what's up? Mm-hmm. But if you go podanai, then it's like, what's up, dog? Except dog, it's not like saying dog in this country. No. It's like if you went to a bar and went podanai to somebody in Tumble Reach, and they would probably shoot you. You would have a problem. I bust you in the nose. Yeah. <laughs> now, the thing because you don't call somebody a dog. No, no, no. But simply herbals. I'm just kind of. We're just. We're kind of treading water. Kind of like with this. Whole okay. COVID well, thing, so. check out. Simp- help yeah. out, Doctor Scott. Come go on, bye, 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 bye. <laughs> so, t- uh, Tacy. Uh, well, Stacy and Tacy. <laughs> but Stacy is known on this show 
for his incessant phone calls to the show, except that the problem is all of his calls are good questions, so we have to run them. So we have at least one or two Stacy uh, questions every show. But the last couple of uh, shows, we haven't had any. And uh, so I just figured it'd be fun to get you in. We'll do nothing but Stacy ca- uh, calls or questions for the rest of the show. Well, I have to start off with one thing just because I have to start off with it. Yep. Tyson! Oh, boy. <laughs> that goes through me just like hearing Opie going, Snowy! <laughs> That's the only reason why I do it. <laughs> but one thing about your old beer store, they loved it up at XM Satellite. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. sent them lots of uh, presents, and you delivered them for us, so thank you. Yeah. An old uh, Vic, I know he liked it a lot. Oh, yeah. Boy, that was a blow, wasn't it? That was just, yeah, that's just heartbreaking. People in Kingsport were heartbroken because, you know, he came here right. and um, he, well, how many people were at that taste? Oh, 200, I have 300 no idea. people. Yeah, I mean, we, it, was it was very packed. well attended. It was packed. We packed a whole barn because the weather was bad. So we did it inside. We had uh, a, a Jim, um, oh gosh, James Bird. And we had uh, Cliff Andrews mm-hmm. did the bat, you know, it, it, some of the people that we have sort of been working with through the new comedian showcase and funniest person in the Tri Cities, and uh, so they got to open for Vic, and they did very well. And Vic gave him some notes and stuff, and then he came out and just destroyed. And people, he really they, did. He was perfect for this area. They loved him, loved and they were him. really shocked when he passed away. Just before he passed, before Carl passed, I'd gone up. I was having dinner with Carl, and we are doing moonshine shots that I brought up from East Tennessee. Yeah. And I'm texting with Vic, and Vic wants me to come to his show. It's kind of like, dude, I'm too drunk to even get on a subway right now with Carl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so you probably had a hand in both of their demise, unfortunately. So with all that moonshine <laughs> you were bringing up. But, but yeah. Yeah. We really Yeah, but we know where my demise is not going to happen after today. Okay. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Um, so, yeah. So Stacy called and said, I want to get one of those calcium scores. Because, because of my family history. Right. My mom died at 63. My dad died at 47. Little brother's already had several stents plugged in. Big brother's dead. And so I'm the only one that hasn't had a major life-altering. So let's talk about the risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And then we'll talk a little bit about the calcium score, and then you can talk about your experience. Uh, So there's five of them, basically. One of them is a family history of, uh, particularly a family history of early coronary disease. So someone that had a, an MI before, say, age 55, is uh, that's a risk factor. But any family history of cardiovascular disease. Um, it, um, high cholesterol. How's your cholesterol? Uh, you saw my numbers today. Well, I, they, but I the listeners haven't seen I know. Them. That's why I'm asking you. I yeah. don't write boys. Not no, they're terrible. Oh, okay. They're great right now because you're on Crestor, but they were bad before, right? Well, yeah. yeah okay. That's why they put me on Crestor. Uh, number three, diabetes. I, way I win that one, too. Yep. Type two. It's yep. not well under controlled as much as yeah, I try. So particularly poorly controlled diabetes. And then number four, hypertension. Are you on a high blood pressure medication? I don't think so. You should be actually on an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker to protect your kidneys from the diabetes that you're not controlling very well. You know, but that's something right. we'll talk about. And then uh, number five is smoking. Don't so, I haven't smoked in 20 you don't years. Smoke. So yeah. you've got three of the five. Okay. Uh, you only need one to get a calcium score. So uh, you went in, and let's talk talked about it. So we scheduled it. That took two minutes, but then— It took longer to do the paperwork and to get registered than the actual test did. Yep. And what they charge him? $49. Isn't that something? Hmm. It's amazing. The girl told me that when they used to do it, it was like 300 but under the, the new system that they've got, it was $49. Yeah, I paid 50 for mine. So so they, they took you through, and then just walk us through yeah. the thing. You and I, we went back there. We sat out there waiting for a little while. They called us back, went back into the CAT scan lab, I guess is what you would refer to it as. Sure. Had me, uh, didn't have to change clothes or anything, which was amazing. Just empty out my pockets. Had me lay down, propped up my knees. The tech was really good. She explained to me ahead of time what was going to happen. Oh, she said to tell you hello to Tacey. Oh. It was uh, Terry. Oh. Becky's friend. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. 
And so set me up in there. She told me, you know, that the machine's going to talk to me, tell me when to breathe and when not to breathe. Uh, slid me back. It's like, tell me what to do. Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm going to breathe when you tell me not to. <laughs> I will not be muzzled. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, so they slid me back in there. It took probably less than two minutes. Uh, the machine ran back and forth, circular, I guess, over me. You could hear it. I guess it was getting calibrated for me. And then the computer voice told me to you know, hold my breath for about 15 seconds. And it moved back and forth. We did that, I think, two or three times. And that was it. It was literally two minutes in the machine at the very most. Amazing. Cool. The CAT scans, when I first started in the 80s, we had our first CT scanner at that hospital. It took 45 minutes to do one scan. Okay. What's the difference in a CAT scan and an MRI? Well, okay. That's an excellent question. Well, let's, let's give your um, – <laughs> hold that thought. Let's give your results. Okay. So um, it's, it, mine was 268. I thought it was 440. Mine was 268. It went from zero to 268 in and about I'll, eight years. We were years. going to take bets on this about somebody taking out. They need to take out life insurance yeah. for me because of my family history. <laughs> this was less than 100. Mm. Oh, wow. Well. I mean, Good for you. That's Thank considered you. normal. I looked yeah. at it, and when she sc- was scanned through, I'm like, there's nothing there. And she said, yeah, there's one little ditzel over here. So that means I, I have no 100. heart. Yeah, <laughs> cold you have, black heart. That's you have it. no calcium deposits the in the arteries clean. of your heart. Yay. So the plumbing is good. Well, good so. for you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We'll give you one of those. There's no hairball clots in your. Yeah. You're a big loser, Steve. <laughs> I know. I am in this regard. I am. He beat me on that. So. And we celebrated by. Our, We're still both at not at high risk, but. Yeah, but mine was so much better than yours. I had a Philly cheesesteak and onion ring while you had a salad. He did. That is true. <laughs> we went out to eat lunch afterward, and he gets this big, greasy Philly cheesesteak. But see, with that's why it's clear, rings. because all that grease keeps everything flowing yeah, through. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm, you're, you're just lucky. Sleek. But anyway. Real lucky. And then you lubricate it with the wine, and he'll push all the grease out. <laughs> So let's do your Framingham risk score. So anyway, yeah, go get your calcium scores. If you have one risk factor, you qualify. And uh, it's um, a lot of hospitals will do it for about 50 bucks. I was thoroughly amazed with it. Yeah. So uh, let's do a Framingham risk calculation on you. You can just Google everyone if, at home. Do this yourself. Uh, Google uh, Framingham risk calculator. So we're going to do that right now. So your gender is male. With a, a girl's name. Age. That's right. <laughs> age. Well, you know, tra- trans fats, bad. Trans everything else, yay. I'm, I'm all, you know, so uh, age is what, 58? 58. You look older than your age. Okay. And then. Oh, oh isn't that sweet? I'm just kidding. Just just somebody it. told me that at Ingalls to me, and I thought. They I said, you look older than your age? Yeah. He looked at my license and said, well, you look way older than that. Oh, my God. And the, and the manager said. Did you really just say that to I that? I think guy? that's not what he meant. I think he was that's that what he said. He saw the boobs and he was nervous and he meant to say, no. "Oh, uh, she looks way He was very younger. young and very stupid and yeah. said something. But he meant really... to say, "You look younger," you know, because I would, you know, and no. he was hoping you'd go, "Oh, really? How young do you <laughs> think I am?" And then it, he, he had this whole fantasy. And then when it, what came out of his mouth was completely yeah, okay, the wrong Steve. thing. I'll, I'll live with that, but okay. um, I don't think that's. It's what... one thing to think that you're stupid. It's another thing to open your mouth and prove it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, total cholesterol was 185. This is on medication. And your HDL was quite elevated at like 55, something like that. I remember it was like 3 to 1. So uh, then your systolic blood pressure, you say, is normal? Yes. So like 130 to 139? Yes. And you're on med- not on medications for high blood pressure. Correct. And you're not a smoker. But you are di- you are you have diabetes. We're trying not to call people di- label people diabetic anymore. We're just going to say you're a person with diabetes. Isn't so, that the same thing? Yes, uh, yes, and no. You don't. You know, it's like you participated, call, so you get it's labeling trophy. people. Oh, We're trophy. trying not to label people, right? I and need then a hug. Known you're vascular not really disease. bald either, Stace. You're just no, I, 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 short I, 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 of hair. <laughs> I'm follically challenged. Yes. <laughs> as now, long as I keep making big razors. You've never had a stroke or anything like that. I know they oh, thought yeah. you had one at one point, but they ruled it out, right? Correct. Okay, so no stroke. So viewer results. So your risk factor, well, okay. Now, what in the shit is this? I'm uh, dead. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so your estimated 10-year global cardiovascular risk is about 18%. So that's why they have you on the double dose of rosuvastatin, which is also known as Crestor. Right. 
and um, why you probably ought to be on um, an ACE or an ARB. You should talk to your primary care, but you got to get your your diabetes under control. Okay. Well, the other thing, the other website that scared me was. Uh, Deathclock.com. Oh, that, oh, no. That sounds like a scary website. Let's do that one. You probably beat me on that, too. Deathclock.com. Yeah. I don't know this one. Let's yeah, but see. you're really Plug old. It in. Okay, so. Th- it's like older than all three of us combined. It, it's, 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 it sells more life insurance on this so website. Old. Oh, really? Is that what this is? I don't know, but it's just funny to me. Okay. Because you can change see. your attitude. and. Okay, I'm going to uh, put in my date of birth here. And I'm right a male Noah. mode. Okay, I'm optimistic, and my BMI is 25 right now, and I'm a non-smoker, so check my death clock. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, oh, wait. I, I'm not 5 feet 7, though. I'm 5'9", uh, and I weigh 1-something, 60-something. Okay. All right, check your BMI. is 25, yes. Okay, check your death clock. Okay, here we go. Oh, Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, July 28, 2040. <laughs> this isn't good for you, Tace. It's July 28, 2040. Now, my life insurance will run out before that. They yeah. actually say? Yep. Saturday, July 28, 2040. Now, I, change, your, change your attitude. Okay, from, then. Oh, okay. And then look at it. You there. need to be calling. Um, Medicare? No, there are life insurance people because well, <laughs> I didn't marry you to, to be poor at the end. <laughs> or to live it that long. Oh, no. Uh, if I, know, if I change it to pessimistic. Days, I thought <laughs> if it didn't work out when I was walking down the aisle, I thought if this doesn't work out, he's 20 years older than me. It He'll be can't, dead. It can't he's last forever. I was thinking the same thing. She smokes. She won't last forever. So I'll get done. No. So if you change it to pessimistic, my date of death is April 16, 2009. <laughs> oh. You're on borrowed time. Yeah, borrowed, borrowed, so this is just bullshit. I know. It's nothing real about it. It's the internet. What do you expect? The truth? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is Holy pretty God. scary, though. Yeah. That's hilarious. I, first time I did that, it scared the crap out of me. I went to walk. I went to a dealer's and bought walking shoes and started walking. Just because of that? Yeah. I need something to get some type of motivation. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good, and then a bang in the night, and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go south. I own a home, and I can tell you... I know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings, but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Well, let's take a let's take a uh, um, call off the Internet, and then we'll get back to some Number one tasty thing, questions. don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. All right, here we go. Hey, it's your old buddy, Stacy. Got a quick oh. question. Oh, oh, come on. Procedure, and they asked me about a, about a living will and a power of attorney. How important is it to have that before you have any medical procedures done? This is another excellent Bye, question. Casey. <laughs> <laughs> they are always good. They're always good questions. They That's really why we are. always have to run them. Yeah, but you have to hear the questions that you don't air. Well, that I call in. I have, we have a stack of those, too. But um, So a living will, uh, sometimes referred to as an advanced directive. So uh, in the set of all living wills, advanced directives are inside that. Or I'm sorry. 
set of all advanced directives, living wills are in that set, right? Okay. Because there's lots of other advanced directives. If I if Tacy calls me and says buy beer and mustard on the way home from work, that is an advanced directive, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a specific kind of advanced directive where you're talking about what do you want as far as medical care is done if you have a permanent catastrophic um, assault on your quality of life and you can't speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. Minus three days regardless. Okay. Unplug me in three days. Okay. You have well, 72 hours. Chop, chop. Let's get moving. You might. Mm. Say, but there, like the Tennessee Living Will, for example, is a lot more specific so, and it's broader. It has things like if uh, basically you say, if I can't speak for myself, who's going to speak for me? So that's the medical power of attorney part. And then if I'm in a coma that I'm never going to wake up from. The massive brain injury, the the neurosurgeons and neurologists have come and said he's never going to wake up. Would that be unacceptable to you? And for me, that's unacceptable. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then the next one is um, permanent confusion. Uh, you well, know, a situation where you have got like terminal Alzheimer's and you're just curled up in a ball making noises all day. Would that be unacceptable to you as far as the quality of life? Yes. And then the third one is uh, permanent dependence. You know, like Alzheimer or not, or not Alzheimer's, um, ALS or a massive stroke, where Tacey has to feed me and you know change my diaper mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It's like yes, that's unacceptable to me. Mm-hmm. And then the third one or the fourth one is just end stage illness. I'm cool with that. If I've got end stage illness, I've got a big screen TV and Netflix. I'm cool. Well, I'm going to start that, doing heroin just because I always wanted to. That's acceptable to me. Yes. <laughs> well, I always yeah. said if I had a terminal illness, I'd start smoking again. That was one yeah. of the motivations I used to quit smoking. And now that I've been quit for 20 plus years, I would have no desire to smoke ever again, even if I get a terminal illness. Well, anyway, so, um, uh, so then if you can't speak for yourself and you've fallen into one of those categories that you said would be unacceptable to you, then what do you want? So the question is, if you're in a permanent coma or one of these other things and you die, would you want CPR and to be put on life support in an attempt to bring you back to continue to be that way? Mm-hmm. And for me, that's an easy hell no. That's, that's your like, DNR, isn't it? That, then you become DNR. Okay. Do not attempt resuscitation or allow natural death, which I like better because it says that's what you're going to do, not what you're not going to do. You know, do not resuscitate just sounds like, well, we could resuscitate you, but we're choosing not to. I don't like that. A-N-D or allow natural death. But anyway, so the beauty of it is I'm not DNR now, right? If right. I if I keel over right here while we're doing this, I, you guys need to do CPR yeah, yeah, and sure. call, you know, sure. call the uh, rescue squad. But I would be C- DNR then. Right. Right. So that's the beauty of the living will is that it, it you're making these decisions ahead of time. And I won't go through the whole thing, but that's basically the gist of it. And um, uh, you can say, like, do you want tube feedings and stuff like that? Mm. Now you go, oh, I don't need that. Why would I need that? Well, there's two things. It protects you from having stuff done to you that you don't want. It also protects your decision maker, and it's often your spouse, from getting bitched at by family members mm-hmm. going, why why you why didn't you feed him and, mm-hmm. you know and it's a, and then you bring this thing out and says hey because that's what he wants or let, right. letting them trying to get them to linger on and on right and on right right and on. right yeah mm-hmm. you got to do everything when well, no, we did everything this is a doing everything to no you're end leaving out to my wishes to no end right yes. right so uh think about it this way if you think if you're out there listening to this and you're over 18. If you're under 18, you shouldn't be listening to this. But if you're over 18 and you're listening to this, you need a living will. And I'll tell you why. Terry Schiavo. Yes. A lot of people don't remember her, but Terry Schiavo was 24, 25-year-old, beautiful young woman, had a stroke, was in a persistent vegetative state, which is a co- basically it's a coma where you sleep and wa- you know have sleep and wake cycles, but it's still a coma. You're unresponsive. You can't do anything. You don't recognize people. You can't have a meaningful conversation with them. And after many many months of this, her husband said Terry would not want to live this way, and he wanted to pull the tube. Well, her parents said, "Oh hell no! Yes, she would." And they wanted it put back in. So they went to court to get him to put it back in. They were successful. He goes to court to get it removed 
again, and he was successful. Then they go to court, back and forth and back and forth, working their way up from local circuit court, appellate courts, all this stuff. Congress gets involved. Now it's MSNBC, CBS, CNN, and Fox News, 24 hours a day news cycle. I believe that this young woman would have been mortified if she had known mm-hmm. what was going on. So eventually, you know, the last judge let him pull the tube, and that would, you know, she expired sometime after that. They made her comfortable in hospice. But um, if she had had a living will, we never would have heard of her because it would have said, yeah, I want it. Or no, I don't. Right. And for those of you out there that are filling out a living will soon, uh, if it asks you about that, be careful about saying, yes, I want indefinite tube feedings, because then that becomes the Terry Schiavo situation. Make sure that's really what you mean, because mine says it's okay to do it for a, for a two-week maximum. And that gives everybody, an, Tacey and my family, enough time to get used to the idea and also to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Right. You know, if I haven't improved at all. Now, if you start to improve at 13 days, then there's nothing in there that says you have to take it out at 14 just because it says 14. Mm -hmm. Those are guidelines. Remember, the living will is a guideline. People feel like, oh, uh, I don't want to get constrained. Well, what if this? What if that? Don't worry about it. The people who are managing your care will um, uh, can use their brain. Right. Okay. All right. That I'll, give, I'll give you a good example. A co-worker of mine, three weeks ago, 34 years old, found dead in the kitchen floor. Oh, yeah. At 34, had two kids, yep. and just had a daughter like three weeks earlier. Yeah. Oh, boy. At 34. Oh, boy. And so now there's the whole thing of what do we do, Yeah. you know? Yeah, sure. So... You never know. So yeah. might as well just plan ahead for it. Yeah. It doesn't take that much time. I did now, mine online. Literally, a living will, if done properly, will take 10 minutes to do. And uh, when you do it, don't do like uh, the Russians did in Dr. Strangelove and hide it away somewhere, like the doomsday bomb. You remember right. that? <laughs> they, they, you know, the Americans are going to accidentally drop this bomb over Russia, and the Russians say, wait, if you do that, it's going to explode this doomsday bomb that's going to sterilize the surface of the earth, and the American president's like... What's the good of having a doomsday bomb if you don't tell anybody about it? So, so they were going to reveal it at some right. some festival, you know, Ta-da. three months later, but it was too late. But anyway, so if you have a living will, don't hide it away. It doesn't do anybody any good. You need to give it to people, the people who are making your decisions, anyone that might take it to the hospital, stick one in your safe deposit box. You know, if it's going to if you might need it soon, you know, if you're sick. Uh, put it in an envelope and put living will on it and tape it to your refrigerator. Could you, you know? leave it with your legal counsel if you hired a lawyer Absolutely. to do this? And that way somebody knows that it's there. Absolutely, you can. Uh, and you should give it, uh, take it to your doctor's appointments and every time you go to the hospital, even if they've scanned it in, bring it in anyway. All right? Okay. Thank you. All right. There you go. Let's see. Uh, what what call is this? Hey, no. <laughs> There you go. Hey, I got it. Dumbass question, I think. But anyway, I deal with acid reflux about once every two years or so. It just hits me in the middle of the night. And, you know, you're pretty sure you're going to suffocate. But now you are lucky if it only hits you once exactly. every couple of years. First time. All of a sudden, your breathing shuts down because of the acid that hits me in the throat. And sometimes it, it gets all the way up into your mouth sometimes. Oh, this is a different thing. I know exactly but what you're talking about. Here. Anyway, what I got to thinking was, as Violent as that acid is, as bad as it burns your throat, what the hell is your stomach lined <laughs> with that it doesn't chew up your own internally? Yeah, well, I mean, the stomach, it, it that's a pretty, Tacey, you, you know something about this. You want to you wanna wax eloquent on the no. lining of the stomach? No, okay. no I do not. <laughs> okay. You didn't um, hear her purring over here while she was... There, there is a protective <laughs> layer in the stomach. So the stomach has um, pumps that and they're called proton pumps, and they pump naked protons, which, by the way, are quantum objects. A naked proton is a quantum object. It's three bound quarks. Okay. But yet the body, millions of years ago, figured out how to take a naked proton and pump it by itself into the uh, – uh, into the stomach line, you know, the stomach lumen. Isn't that something? That's incredible, yeah. Because that's how proton pump inhibitors work. Right. 
You know, you take Prilosec, it poisons those proton pumps. And then once you poison a proton pump, it's no good. Again, it has to be, the stomach has to make more. But it can constantly make these these protein devices that can move a quantum object from one side of the stomach to the other. Right. It's insane. Mm. Think about that. Without Before we ever knew anything about wave functions or Schrodinger equations or quarks or any of that crap, the human body, and not only the human body, I mean the animal kingdom, figured out how to utilize naked protons for its own use. And what that does is, you know, the hydrogen ions will will um, uh, will follow those protons, and you get hydrochloric acid. Hmm. I just know that, you know, every couple of years, the first time this happened— I'm oh, sorry. I said the, no, the, the, no, the naked no. proton is a hydrogen ion. I'm sorry. The electrons will, will, will follow. follow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just know the first time it happened, it was probably 30 years ago, and I was sure I was— Chloride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the only thing I could figure out to do was flip over on my hands and knees, get my head down, and just try to breathe very yeah. slowly. Yeah. And then you spend the next 30 minutes burping because you're trying to swallow air because you're yes. trying to get air in there. Yeah. And so anymore, as soon as it starts, that's the first thing I do. I flip onto my hands and knees and just try to stay calm. So let me tell you how to, that what you're having is there. there is gastroesophageal reflux where you just have acid that just sort of causes heartburn. And if if the lining of the stomach is not, um, uh, doesn't have the integrity that it needs, then you can get an ulcer. You know, it can right. start eating away. That's what an ulcer is, okay. is when the uh, well, stomach a acid starts eating, mm-hmm. eating the uh, stomach lining. But... Um, and you can get failure of that through lots of different things, either producing so much acid, right, or um, things that mess with prostaglandins, which would be um, nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, stuff like that. People that take a lot of those can get ulcers as well. Uh, what else, Tase? A stress can do it Mm -hmm. um well i haven't been paying attention but did you say chocolate or peppermint no i didn't no well we're talking about things that cause ulcers not things that make them oh i thought you were talking see i told you i haven't smoking smoking yeah smoking alcohol abuse i mean things like that can so anyway um so but then there's mechanical reflux and that's when the lower esophageal sphincter which is the valve at the bottom of the esophagus it's not really even a valve it's just a ring of muscle right and uh, when it just opens up in the middle of the night and then all that fluid that's in your stomach goes rushing up and not only what else is there though your voice box is yes so the airway so this stuff will just start pouring into your airway and then you will aspirate and that's where you're getting the coughing and the hacking from and it's not only is it fluid but it's fluid with a low pH, it's very acidic, and so it's caustic, and it really causes a lot of pain. You get pain in the back of your throat. You're coughing. It's hard to breathe. It's terrible when it yes. happens to Steve. Now, I have not had it happen in, in years. In a long time. In years, because I figured out what the problem is. Number one, I don't eat any carbohydrates, uh, a particularly gluten-containing, you know, like bread and mm-hmm. pasta and stuff like that within about four to six hours of going to bed. Okay. So you, as a diabetic, should be on a low glycemic diet and maybe even a low carb diet anyway. So, But I found that if I eat meat and vegetables or just vegetables alone, salad, that kind of stuff, never have a problem. But if I was eating uh, bread or pasta or lots of like French fries, this sort of concentrated starch, then uh, within four hours of going to bed, it was a problem. The next thing, if this, even if it just happens twice a year, you don't ever want it to happen. So right. you want to prevent it 100% of the time. Uh, take a couple of bricks and put it under the head of your bed. Okay. Because if you put pillows under the your back and then you bend yourself up so that you're kind of sitting up, what you're actually doing, since you have a little bit of a gut, not a lot, but I a little bit. I haven't seen my feet in years. <laughs> yeah. It, so what happens? So when you bend, your that that extra weight over your abdomen actually pushes up into the stomach, increases the pressure okay. on the stomach, and actually makes it more likely to happen. The third thing is to uh, take a, a um, an antacid that floats before you go to bed, and that would be Gaviscon. 
It's uh, the only one that I'm aware of that actually floats. And so it, it will lay on top of that layer of fluid. And then if it does happen to get into your esophagus and up, it's, at least it's going to uh, neutralize the acid to some okay. degree. So it's less caustic. So that, that really is just helps you if it happens. But the main thing is preventing it is low carb at dinner. And uh, go easy on the alcohol at dinner, too, because that loosens that lower esophageal sphincter. If you smoke, like Scott said, stop. Mm. And then uh, put brick under the head of your bed. Because I've started just trying to find, because I don't want to go to bed on an empty stomach and wake up, you know, a few hours later starving. So I've actually started doing fruit smoothies Mm -hmm. without adding any alcohol, which is really good. Yeah, that may be a problem with this. That's a terrible idea, though, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, right before bed. I don't know. That that may be a problem with this. No. Okay. Especially if it's cold. Right. Is it cold? Of course. No, yeah. you want it's got to be, you need something warm and I'll tell you why the stomach Yeah, this one this yeah. is one of these yeah. ayurvedic kind of chinese things but he's yeah. a, I think he's 100% right okay. on this. When you so, think about it, anything cold like if you fall down hit your elbow we're going to give you an ice pack for right. your elbow, right? Your stomach's a muscle, putting cold things in there makes it shrink and if it does that it takes away one of the two mechanisms you've got of getting food out of there. Because motility is the key. If yeah, it's it's going to decrease right, peristalsis, right. too. It's going to slow peristalsis, so the food's not going to kick out of there. So the brain says, oh, we still have food in there. Kick in more acid, more acid, more acid. Mm-hmm. That's why people with cold drinks and cold foods have increased acid because it's not getting out of their stomach quick enough. Okay. So if you're going to eat anything really low on the sugar and not before and you nothing, go to bed and nothing either. cold yeah, yeah just wake if up it's warm hungry. who yeah, gives if a shit if you're if yeah. you I mean, I mean, if Liam warm, says that well i don't want to wake up hungry and it's like it's when you get up then eat something then eat something that. but you, um you need to go to bed hungry yeah. or i mean you need to be hungry at night so that your stomach isn't full of stuff and you may have a little gastroparesis too mm-hmm. you know slowing of the emptying of the mm-hmm. stomach that okay. would be an interesting thing for us to do um, because there are some medications for that that can speed up. Uh, we have a friend who has gastroparesis, and uh, when she eats, her stomach just fills up and it just sits there. You know, it takes forever for it to get out. Mm-hmm. There are medications, but sometimes you're just flogging a dead horse, so they have to put in what they call a gastric pacemaker, which is actually stimulates the stomach to contract to get the food wow. out of the stomach. Yeah, it's like, a, little, it's like a nerve stimulator right. yeah. your spine too. Um, but you know what you could eat instead of a fruit smoothie just eat like a, a, a scoop full of sugar-free almond butter or peanut butter something you made yourself it's room temperature right at least you get some good protein mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot easier to digest or just eat you know like a normal person and mm-hmm. then go to bed and uh, you, if you wake up hungry then yeah, yeah roll over and go back to sleep yeah part of it was <laughs> i remember listening to an interview one, with kevin smith when he after his heart attack and he went through he lost you know a ton of weight and yeah. everything and he was talking about, you know, he would get hungry, and then he'd finally just figure out, screw it, I'm yeah. hungry. Yeah. And 10 minutes later, What's it going to do? Passes. It makes you uncomfortable. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I found that. If, but I'm a, if I'm I'm a fat, wor- lazy American. I want to be fat. I know, I know. If I'm working <laughs> and too. I get hungry, it goes away because I've got something to do. Right. Now, when I come home, and if Tacey isn't ready to, you know, hang out or anything, what do I do? I start eating, and I start fog eating. You know, I just start cramming stuff in my mouth. I'm not even that hungry. Right. So um, I have the same, you know, at least now, thanks to Noom, I'm binging on rice cakes instead of Snicker bars, which I used to binge on, and chips and dip and stuff like that. Right. But, uh, yeah, that, that'll that prevent that. It okay. really will. There are some other medications that you could take. I used to take metoclopramide, and the pro- metoclopramide uh, increases forward peristalsis, and it increases the pressure on the lower esophageal sphincter. The problem is if you take it forever, you can get a uh, an adverse effect called tardive dyskinesia. And have you ever seen these old crazy people on the street just smacking their lips all the time, just going, You don't want that. that. That's what that is. Yeah, weird kinetic. Motion. I always just, yeah. you know, thought that was war shock or something like that. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> so, but anyway, so, mm. all right. Okay. So there's your reflux question. What else you got for us? We, we had said a single word about COVID so far. Okay. Mm. What I COVID question? Oh, well, yeah. We need to talk a little bit about that. Yes, we had some did. big news this week. Mm. Uh, uh, Pfizer had uh, reported um, a 90% effectiveness of their vaccine. Now, here's the thing. And this is, I'm going to give them one of these. For that. And for the scientists who were involved. Give in yourself it. a bill. 
So they um, uh, 90% effective. This is and it, one of the articles. This is how bad medical journalism is. It said, well, there were 94 participants and they had 90% efficacy. And it's like that doesn't even make sense. That's not what happened. So people are going only 94. That doesn't. No, this says um, there were 43,538 participants. Thank you. That's right. And 94 of them got uh, were got infected, and the 90% of them were in the the um, uh, the placebo group and 10% were in the COVID. I mean, that's simplifying it, but that's basically it. So there was a 90% reduction in infection rate on the side of the vaccine. Now, there's only 94 people. This uh, We talked about this from day one. This is the problem that the there's so few people. It seems like it, well, we get, the whole world's getting it. They really aren't. You know, right now it's like, what, 2%? Mm-hmm. Of the United States so far, or right. maybe that it's that 3%. That 90, 98% not getting it. That's right. Yeah. So, Isn't that something? How about we being positive about a little something? You know, well, like you and I were talking about it at lunch today when I was having that great big huge Philly cheesesteak and you're having <laughs> your salad. Right. But the American Cancer Society said last year there were 660,000 people died from cancer. Yeah. There's been a little over 200,000 deaths. Now, granted, that's that's a horrible number. Yeah. But 200,000. Yeah, everyone a tragedy, by the way. Because of COVID. Okay. Yeah. Six, which one's bigger, 200,000 or 660,000? Right. But we're not losing our crap over cancer all of a sudden. Well, but the, cancer's the devil that we know, right? But the thing is, is we know it's there. Yeah. So why, right. you know, why is this other just... Yeah, I, it does I, blow my mind that people still smoke cigarettes, because, you know, knowing what we know about it. But I smoked, and I get it. I was a doctor, and I smoked. I knew. The only time that I qu- that that I got serious about quitting is when I read a statistic that said that if I don't quit by the time I'm 40, I won't be able to get an erection anymore. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. I didn't care about heart disease, didn't care about cancer. But that one statistic really, uh, yeah. I quit because of to survive. And when I say that, I was in law enforcement. I was a canine and tactical officer and me trying to fight. And oh, I just had you had just no win. Didn't have the win. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm fixing to get become a statistic with a big blue line down the middle of a flag with my mm-hmm. name on if I don't quit smoking. Yeah. So yeah. I started dipping. And then, you know, that makes a lot more sense. Oh, yeah. Well, because then I could breathe. <laughs> and spit in and, the face of someone when oh, you're yeah. arresting them. <laughs> but then, see, the next plan was, okay, if I'm going to quit that, then I'm going to Go to heroin next. I'm ah, ah, just yeah. going to quit everything so now. It looks like 3% of the country has, has been infected that we know of. Now, there are people that have been infected we don't know of. De- de- define what's symptomatic is. Okay, well, because, people that had symptoms, you know, they had cough, well, fever. So but they, the ones that don't have syndrome. it. The, 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 the ones that don't have any symptoms, but they're still carrying it. They have. They are asymptomatic. So they didn't I've never symptoms. heard anybody define the difference between the two, what asymptomatic means. Oh, it means they they had no symptoms. Without symptoms. Without. Yeah, but they, they have it. They had but it. They had the disease. They, they, had, the, sh- right. they had the the infection of the virus. They didn't have the disease. They got infected by the virus, right. but it had no symptoms. So they found out about it after after, serendipitously afterward. And that's why it's so hard to know. And uh, I was talking in front of the uh, Bar Association, our local Bar Association recently, and they said, how come some people say this is a catastrophe and some people are saying it's just like the flu? Well, both of them are kind of right, mm-hmm. but it just depends on the numbers that you use. So there is case fatality and there's infection fatality, right? So let's say that you've got a virus where a 1,000 people were infected. A hundred of them got symptoms. Five of them died. Okay. Okay. Thousand people infected. A hundred cases. Five died. So the case mortality rate on this particular, you know, artificial virus is five percent. Right. Five people out of a hundred people died. That's catastrophic. Mm-hmm. But the infection fatality rate is 05 percent because mm-hmm. five out of a thousand died. Right. That's not so bad. So both of the, you can I can use so you got to look at both of the numbers. You can't just look at one or the other because if you're uh, of the mind to say this is a catastrophe, you will use the case fatality ratio and you will say two hundred and thirty nine thousand six hundred seventy one people died. Or if you want to say it's not that big of a deal, then you'll use the infection fatality rate, which looks like it's pretty low, about 0.5 percent. So they're using like this, they're shaping their numbers for the outcome that I, they won't. That's because this you, thing has become a political problem. So uh, because you hear 
two hundred something thousand. Okay, how many people died in a motor vehicle accident? Well, yeah, but, they tested, but these are two. Okay, so, so but they tested positive. They so tested positive. So there now, is some of that. There is some of that. We'll never be able to ferret out a hundred percent of that. But uh, if you look at the CDC website, you you can die with COVID or you could die from COVID, right? So someone or die without COVID. Someone right, or you could die without COVID altogether. So if you had a motor vehicle accident right. and you were asymptomatic and you died in the motor vehicle accident, blood force trauma, and then they uh, your test came back that you got two days before and it was positive. That's not a COVID death. It shouldn't be listed that way. So, for example, um, if we would put on a death certificate, viral pneumonia or respiratory failure, secondary to viral pneumonia, secondary to COVID-19. Okay. Okay. That is a COVID death. Right. Someone who died from COVID-19, the they... disease that is called caused by the virus SARS CoV2 have they ever publicly split out the numbers between those that died strictly from covid yes because of respiratory or and, and here's what they also do is every couple of months the CDC will come out with the, this revised preliminary number right and people will freak out because they'll say only 6% of the deaths were from COVID-19. I mean, what they're talking about is on the death certificates, some dumbass doctors, 6% of us are dumbasses, they put on the death certificate, COVID-19. That's all they put. Right. That's what they're talking about. Hmm. No one dies from COVID-19. They die from complications from, See, this from is like, the infection. This is like me being in law enforcement. I got in a shoot, don't shoot situa- situation. I had to... Discharged my weapon. I killed somebody, but was they fell back, they hit the head on the curb. Right. So which one killed them? Right. right, right. Hitting the head on the curb or that three fifty seven Magnum round. Right. Well, on a death and, certificate, thankfully, it's it's it, you know the logic of it is a little less rigorous. Okay. But um, you can't just put COVID nineteen. If you're a doctor out there and you're doing death certificates and you're writing, that's the only thing you write on the death certificate. You're doing it wrong. Hmm. Because they died of respiratory failure, or they died of septic shock, or they died of, you know, a bacterial super infection that was caused by septic, you know, by sepsis, uh, caused by viral pneumonia, caused by COVID nineteen, caused by, and then you could put infection with SARS CoV two if you wanted to, hmm. but just to put just COVID nineteen is not acceptable. Yes, sir. Everybody, you keep hearing died from heart failure. Doesn't everybody die from heart uh, failure? Oh, no, yeah. Okay, no, not everybody. So your heart can stop. You're right. But And what you can't do is put um, cardiac, uh, what was the word that they don't want us to use? Because they said don't put the means of death. You want to put the cause of death. Okay, your so heart every, stops. Everyone's heart stops when they die. So right. you don't want to put that on there. But what made their heart stop? And it could be cardiac failure. Now, when but, they're talking about that, they're talking about pump failure. But doesn't that associate just like... COVID in no. relation to dot to dot in no, relation no, no. to because, because heart, heart failure means a certain thing and what that means is pump failure. Uh, when you have someone that has heart failure, the heart is not pumping out as much blood as it is coming into it. Okay. So when you when your heart contracts, it should pump out about sixty five percent of the blood that's in it because it's not perfect. It's not going to be a hundred percent, right? It's not going to pump itself dry. So sixty five percent, pretty good. When it gets down to twenty percent. Now, when you walk and you move and you're pumping, you know, all those muscles are pumping blood up to the right side of the heart. Right. And then it goes through the the um, the lungs and then gets dumped into the left side of the heart. And then the left side of the heart has to pump it back out again. More blood is coming in than going out. So it's like a pump that gets overprimed. Right. And now you have fluid backing up into the lungs. And that's why people get pulmonary edema. That's what we call it when the lungs get all wet right. with uh, fluid that's backed up from... <laughs> he said fluid. Uh, <laughs> that from, <laughs> from the... Uh, you, that's The whole reason that cliche came up was because you can't talk about medical stuff without talking about fluid. There's uh, no, no other word. No, I know, I know. It. It's just hilarious. So... Um, uh, but that's, that's how that happens. So when you say heart failure, you're not saying cardiac you know, arrest. Okay. Right. right. Your t- heart failure means something to us, and that means pump failure. Okay. 
So they could put congestive heart failure. Would be better to put that on there because it would be a little clearer. All right? Okay. Mm. Scott, you got anything? I like it. All right. You got anything <laughs> to plug? Mm, no. No. Okay. Tacey? Nope. How about your uh, Twitter, Stacy? Stacy Deluxe One. Okay. It's with that with an E. S T A C Y. Yeah. Yep. And Barge uh, Lifeline. Pl- plug, yeah, plug your business again. BargeLifeline.com or right. USAMarineConsulting.com. There you go. Thanks always. Go to Dr. Scott and Tacy and now Stacy Deloach. Good to have you in here. 100% Stacy questions. <laughs> we should have gotten our fill, but we'll have three more for next show. So. Yeah, I want to ask you about smoking. If a smoking marijuana can cause a heart attack. Okay. No, yeah. We'll talk about it. No, it's good for you. It's good for we, you. We can't forget <laughs> Rob Sprantz, Bob Kelly, Greg Hughes, Anthony Cumia, Jim Norris. Norton, Travis Teff, Lewis Johnson, Holly from uh, Florida, Paul Ofcharsky, Eric Nagel, Roland Campos, Chowdy the, um, uh, from South Florida, Sam Roberts, Pat Duffy, Dennis Falcone, uh, Martha from Arkansas's daughter, Matt Kleinschmidt, Dale Dudley, the great Rob Bartlett, Bernie and Sid, Ron Bennington, and Fez Watley, whose support of this show has never gone unappreciated, also Chrissy's sister is in there too. Listen to our Sirius XM show on the Faction Talk channel, Sirius XM channel 103 Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern, on demand and other times at Jim McClure's pleasure. Many thanks go to our listeners whose voicemail and topic ideas make this job very easy. Go to our website at drsteve.com for schedules and podcasts and other crap and check out Dr. Scott's website at simplyherbals.net Until next time Check your stupid nuts for lumps. Quit smoking, get off your asses, and get some exercise. We'll see you in one week for the next edition of Weird Medicine. Thanks, everybody. It's tough. It's tough.